So this video is going to be pretty short. It's just me wrapping up the books that I read for the Asian Readathon. The Asian Readathon is hosted by Cindy from the channel With Cindy, and it coincides with Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, which is the month of May. Um, I really enjoyed this challenge, mainly because it helped me find a lot of new favorite books um, and a new favorite series, and I'm really grateful for that. Sometimes I need a targeted goal to read books that have been on my shelf for a while, so this also was a good way to get rid of a lot of backlog books. There were only five challenges, um, and that seems like it would be really easy. Like, oh, five bu books in one month, that's fine. No, it's actually really difficult, um, because one of the twists to the challenge that you can do is make sure that all of your authors that you read from are from different parts of Asia, or from different Asian countries. Um, and I That'll make sense in a second when I break down what I read. Um, but it was really fun, and I actually overshot the challenge by, like, one book. I read I read one. I started it and realized it wasn't going to fit into any of the challenges, but I finished it anyway because it was on my TBR, so I might as well. Um, and it was really good. Again, this was a really great way to kind of finish some books that ended up being really good books. Um, so let's look really quickly at what I read, um, and I'll kind of talk about, you know, what I liked and didn't like about those books. The first challenge that I have written down and the first challenge that I completed was read read any book by an Asian author that is not U.S. centric, um, which might be harder than you think. Um, mine wasn't because I already had this book on my TBR. I saw that Cindy had on her TBR, and it's Home Fire by Camilla Shamsi. And Camilla Shamsi is Pakistani, so that was her nationality. And Home Fire takes place, there's, there's a brief section that takes place in the U.S., but most of it is in London and Pakistan. Uh, Home Fire is a retelling of Antigone. Um, I talked about this briefly in my wrap-up because I had read this before the 50-book wrap-up. And um, it looks at the relationship between the siblings that had in Antigone. It was Antigone, uh, Ismini, and their brother who had passed away, and they were trying to get his body back. So if you've read Antigone, you kind of know where this book is going to go, and unfortunately it does go the route of the Greek tragedy, so it, it will kind of hurt your feelings at the end. It will make you sad, but um, I believe it was beautifully written um, for what it was supposed to be. I saw a lot of complaints and reviews about it not, not things not being well-developed the way they needed to. And I'm like, did we not read the same tragedy? That wasn't the point. The point of Greek tragedies is to have a person be sort of a figurehead for a ideal, an ideal or a movement. And I believe that this book did a good job of translating that into a modern audience. The book is also beautiful, like just cover-wise, very, very pretty. The next challenge was any book featuring an Asian protagonist. And for that one, I read Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng, and she is Chinese. Everything I Never Told You is about a Chinese-American family in the 1970s when their middle daughter mysteriously dies. They find her body, um, and she has drowned, and then sort of coping with her loss. Over the course of the novel, it is revealed that this daughter was sort of representing the hopes and dreams of both of her parents. When they didn't get to accomplish what they wanted out of life, they had put this on their daughter, and that pressure on her but also the ignorance for the son and the youngest daughter because she was the focus. And it was very sad to read. It was very beautifully written. I can't wait to read more of her work um, because this was so well crafted in such a small book. Uh, but that was the second book I read. Next challenge was to read any book by an Asian author. And I read The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chashki. I love this book. I love this book so much. If I could wrap up the entire ensemble cast of this book and just sort of hug them, I would. Um, they were beautiful um, and amazing and talented, and I loved the chemistry of the group. Like, they worked so well together that I immediately checked the Silvered Serpents out from my library, and I'm listening to that now. And I anticipate I will probably pre-order the third and final book that comes out this year. It was so good. It's a heist book. But it's a heist book that has very smart, believable characters that all have very unique reasons to go on the heist. Um, and I really love that. It's not just a heist for a heist stake. It's not one person wanting something and everyone just going along because, sure, he's really charismatic. It was, we all have something we need out of this. We all have vetted interests that this works. Um, and I just really love that. And I love that I'm reading the second one now. Like I said, I'll, I'll have finished The Silvered Serpents by the end of this month. So I'll, you know, count that to my overall book. But 
I love that they still remain like heavy stakes in the second book and they've changed up sort of the dynamics of the group but the group still really cares about each other also Hypnos is so good bless his little heart he just wants to belong and if they give me some twist where he's actually evil I'm gonna be so sad because I love him so much the next challenge was a book in your favorite genre written by an Asian author and my favorite genre is horror um and I kind of ran into this problem where I'm in what I've said before is kind of a library desert and that is if I don't have it in a physical library I have to check it out in an online source and if the online source doesn't have it and I don't have it in my physical library then I can't get it short of spending money I didn't want to spend money on this challenge I really wanted to work through what I had because I've got a lot going on um so I had to kind of choose a secondary option because there were no horror options available to me that I haven't already read um and so I read a classic and this also ends up being literary fiction and I love literary fiction um, just based on sort of my reading tastes that works out and this was good because I need to read this in anticipation of maybe teaching an AP class um, I know you're just anxious with anticipation to find out what it is um, I read Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro and he is Japanese and I really liked it I don't know how he managed to write a whole book that sounds legitimately like the biography of like an English butler in the 50s but he does and he does this sort of unraveling sadness throughout the novel where you know you think you're reading one thing and about halfway through while this butler is reminiscing about his time being a butler and what makes a great butler you realize the just depressing futility and uselessness of his life and what he's done and you realize it along with him it's so sad but it still ends kind of happy with him deciding it's like you know what no I'll just I'll choose to do this now instead it doesn't really do me any good to keep looking back at this but it was really sad to read through that um I still would recommend it it was very short um it is not a good beginner classic if you've never read classics before it's it is really it sounds like a butler it's heavily heavily dialect heavy on that specific style of talking and so it takes a while to get into but um if you like classics this would be a really good one to add so I'm glad I finished it the last one I read that completed the challenge is a nonfiction by an Asian author and this was another really hard one I ended up reading I checked out and listened to an audiobook of when breath becomes air by Paul Calliope and he is Indian American and he was a doctor who was diagnosed with lung cancer and sort of wrote about that experience he was also an English major he he mastered in English and then he went and got his uh, PhD and so he wrote from this beautiful connection of like science and heart and spirituality and hearing it read was just very impactful the epilogue is written by his wife because unfortunately he passed away before this book could be published and there's just something beautiful and sad about that um it was a very quick read I would highly recommend it he has some interesting thoughts to say about sort of preparing yourself and others for death and you know what you deem as important to do when you are met with little to no time left on this earth and I just thought it was really beautiful two books that I finished outside of this challenge or in the case of one I will finish you know I will finish it um, were Rich People Problems by Kevin Kwan and he is Singaporean and that was just me finishing the Crazy Rich Asians trilogy that I started like two three years ago um, and it was really good my one problem with Rich People Problems is I really wanted Sun Yi's story uh, of her being a child in like the war and helping people out in the war I wanted that to be its own novel I really want that to be a separate story because it was very interesting but it didn't vibe with the opulence of the other characters in the story like it just didn't it was there to make the ending make sense but it it didn't vibe with the rest of the tone and I really wanted two separate things with that um, I'm also again gonna finish the silvered serpents if not today probably this weekend before the end of May um, and I'm really looking forward to that because it's just she's so good at that ensemble cast um, but that was the Asian Readathon challenge that is what I read I would Full, wholeheartedly recommend every single one of these books there was not a single book that did not hit in this challenge um, they were all amazing for different ways um, obviously read into them and see if they're gonna be in a genre you like but I 
fully support you reading any of these books. They're very good. Um, and that's it. That was my wrap up. Um, I would love to know if you also did this challenge and if you read anything interesting that I might want to pick up. It's probably already on my shelves. So <laughs> just let me know. All right. Um, have a, have a great day.